we're gonna get on to some fun insurance. We're gonna make a difference in your business by lowering your liabilities, by taking a look at where you can save, by how you can make more money, by lowering your expenses, by increasing your, your um, I guess, just looking at how to protect yourself more and making a difference in, in your life and in your business. So I wanna turn over the stage and introduce a dynamic woman, uh, a proud member, a fantastic ambassador, um, Angie, the insurance ninja. Thank you so much for being here today. Tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, thank you for having me. My pleasure. I am Angie. I call myself the insurance ninja because it's always about cost, coverage, and protection. Um, I like to say I sell fun insurance because you should love what you do, right? And I absolutely do. Um, that being said, I just like to help people save money. Okay, well, we want to save money. We definitely want to make a difference, and we want to save money, and we want to make the segment fun. So you have to tell us how to um, really get excited about loving our insurance and loving what we do. And there's a lot of things that we can take into consideration. You can be an investment property owner, and you can save. You can be a renter, and you can save. You can be a business owner, and you can save. And you can be a homeowner, and you can protect your assets. So. Why don't you give us an idea as to, if I was a business owner, what are some of the things that I can do to protect my assets, to make more money, and to make sure that I'm covering myself from liability and loss? One of the biggest concerns that I see with people who may or may not, who have small businesses or home-based businesses, is that they don't carry any coverage at all. Oh. Scary, scary, scary. That's that's not good. So yeah, a lot of businesses that are home-based businesses don't really consider themselves businesses. And then what ends up happening is they have so much liability that's out there, they're not protecting themselves at all. And then if something happens, it literally puts you out of business. So you don't want that to happen. So or product. When do you when do you have to say, hey, mm -hmm. I need to do something? Um, almost the minute you open your doors, you should make sure that if you've got foot traffic, you've got liability coverage. Somebody gets hurt on your property coming to buy your product, you need liability. You're selling stuff over the internet, you need internet liability. You're doing booths and trade shows, you need liability coverage. Uh, you've got product in your home sometimes too. If you're selling a, a home-based business product and you've got inventory, you need to make sure you covered your inventory. What if you lost it all? Yeah, that can put you out of business. That's for sure. You know, because if you don't have that inventory and you have the credit card debt because you bought your credit, you bought your inventory with credit cards, that's just a surefire way, fire way to kill your success Absolutely. and not reach your goals. Now, what if you are a business owner and you own a home? What are some of the things that you need to take into consideration? The best way to actually handle that situation is to make sure that you take your homeowner's policy and endorse on there for incidental home business occupancy. So in layman's terms, you've got people coming to your home or you're selling product from your house or you have square footage. Not only do you need to claim that square footage on your taxes, you need to add it into your insurance policy. You may not need two policies. You may not need a liability policy and a homeowner's policy. You might be able just to take that homeowner's policy and add the liability to it, therefore keeping your costs low. I know there are a lot of people that are watching here today and they're sitting there saying, I hate insurance, I have it intact, it's in place, I don't wanna to talk to anybody about it, I don't wanna change anything, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But when are some of the times that things may change in your life, in your home, where you may say, you know what, I need to let my insurance person know about this. What are some of the things we might need to change? Um, I, every year you should take a look at it. Rates change every year, so you could actually reduce your home budget. It doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but you take out that policy, you flip to page 12 because you've read it all, and um, you call your, Not, your insurance agent. <laughs> I, I don't know about you, but I know that most people have probably never read their entire insurance policy. I'm gonna throw that out on the table, which they probably should. Right. Right. No, um, in all seriousness, an insurance review should be done annually. It's never, I always tell people, it's never, ever, ever how well you know your insurance agent. It doesn't matter. It's how well your insurance agent knows you because you have the inventory, you have the assets, the liability, you're the one who needs the protection. Uh, we don't know if you've made changes. We need to ask. We need to have those conversations with you annually. We need to know that you've added square footage, taken out a loan, increased your inventory. Believe it or not, a lot of policies are based on payroll. If your payroll changes, we don't know that unless you tell us. You could actually be lowering your premium. 
And, you know, I would imagine they're not going to jump out and ask you the question, you know, do you have less employees this year? Do you have less square footage this year? Have you on your home, have you changed things? Like, have you improved your electric? Have you improved your plumbing? Like, could those things make a difference in how much you're paying? Absolutely. So anytime you make a change or improve your property, your roof is new. There's inspections for that. You can actually cut your insurance, sometimes 500 or more. You've updated your plumbing. You would think I had a claim so the insurance company already knows about it. They don't. The claims company knows about it. The insurance company might not. Maybe it's not the best rate anymore. Maybe you've done all these updates and your current company isn't the best rate. Somebody should shop that. There are 99 different carriers in the state of Florida and an independent agent should have access to most of them. What are some of the things that would affect <coughs> your, your rate? What are some of the things that would tell us, hey, you know, you could save money this year and, and increase your profits with your business or your, your life if you knew that these things affected your rate. Shopping's always really important. And again, like I, like I started to say, roofing, wiring, electricity, and your AC unit are the big ones. Now, let's say you, you add a security system or you live in a gated community with a passkey gate or you're retired. All of those things are actually hidden bonuses on your insurance policy. Um, let's say, for example, you had a Rottweiler and you don't have him anymore. Uh, there are so many companies that will actually take your insurance coverage in Florida when you do have a scary or a vicious dog or pet rats, I don't know, scary animals. Um, that being said, if you don't have those anymore, now you're open to a whole other market pool of carriers. So shop. Tell people. Let people know when there's changes. Okay, so did you just say <laughs> that... <laughs> A pit bull or a Rottweiler is equal to a scary rat. <laughs> no. Who would have thought that your pets can affect what you're paying, me, your premium, Yeah. like on a monthly basis? Mm -hmm. So are you telling me that the type of pet that you choose can affect your expenses on a monthly basis? There are about five or six vicious dogs, um, Rottweilers, Akitas, Chows, pit bulls, and the like that can actually, Bengal tiger cats, um, can actually affect your insurance rate or make it excluded altogether, reducing the amount of companies you can actually shop with. And shopping's fun, right? So the more you can shop, the better. Well, you know, and I think everybody needs to absolutely shop at least three different companies before they make a decision. And you need to use your time wisely enough to say, hey, I've compared this price with this person with this person, and now I'm going to make an educated decision. Because that's what you have to do anytime you purchase. It doesn't matter what you're purchasing. But, you know, I think it's interesting that you say that because I, I remember when we were shopping for disability insurance for my husband. As a photographer, he had a harder time or more challenging mm -hmm. time getting coverage because I guess they thought every photographer in the world was like like National Geographic taking pictures of Bengal tigers or whatever. <laughs> so your occupation, could that actually play a part in, in that type of coverage? Um, what you do for a living can, can definitely um, play a part when you're doing liability or commercial insurance for sure, business insurance always. Not necessarily so much with your um, homeowners or auto insurance. Okay. What about, um, what about your credit? Like, mm -hmm. does your credit play a part in, in any of this? Can it affect the, the, how much you're paying for your car payment or your car loan or your car insurance or your home insurance or anything like that? I'd like to say it doesn't, but I would be lying. So. That's why it's fun insurance. <laughs> fun That's insurance. It's fun insurance. So honestly, um, yes, it does. Now, when I say that, I can't see your credit rating. No insurance can see your credit rating. But what happens is a financial responsibility is pulled and your claims history, and those things are compiled behind the scenes. So yes, if you have a 650 to 750, you're in one tier. Uh, 500 to 600 in another tier, et cetera. So financial responsibilities are important. If that changes and you've rebuilt your credit, it's time to shop again. I think that's important. And you know, I think the other thing that's important to take into consideration is, is to know your coverage and to be important, it, to take the time to know your risk. It's really important to do that. And I think, I know if you ask me right now, Kathleen, what all are you paying? I'm paying a lot of different stuff. I really have no clue. Like I'd have to go to my filing cabinet and pull each file and then say, here, tell me what I have. Mm -hmm. Because most people think they have full coverage when they really don't or they don't understand what they're getting or not. So how, how do we know our coverage and how do we know our risk? First of all, I hate the term full coverage. Everybody, I mean, that, that's an easy term to say I have full coverage. 
you want to know you have full coverage, that's peace of mind. It just means something different to every person out there. Your neighbor has a different full coverage than you have. Um, yeah, you should review your policy annually. Should you do it alone? Probably not. You can't read it, right? You already admitted you couldn't read it. You have no idea what that says. So make an appointment. It's what she told me to get. I know, yeah. liked and trusted her, and that's what I bought. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. You should always trust who you're working with. But um, definitely, you got to know your risk. You got to know your coverage, and you need to know what's excluded. Some older homes might have water excluded, or limited water, meaning they'll only cover claims up to five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars, et cetera. Um, there's new companies hitting the streets in Florida that will only cover you if they get to do the repairs. I, I wouldn't want to be bound that way. It's not a product I sell. I wouldn't want to be bound that way. And, and you have to know what you're buying. If you get a quote, like you mentioned earlier, you shop three or four different companies and you lay it out side by side, it's really not that simple. Something's always missing. We all have the same carriers, the same companies. It's what we're quoting. Did you get your contents replaced? Did you get the home insured at the exact same value? Is the deductible different? Do you even have a hurricane deductible? Those are all important things to take into consideration. I know that we have the fabulous Tony Zufolt, who is mm -hmm. a member, and she does the CYA asset inventory where she analyzes what your assets are. And, and I can tell you two things I think is really important. If you haven't had an outside company come in and, and analyze your assets, take pictures of everything, analyze the worth of it, and then send a copy to your insurance provider, I think that's huge. And that could be the biggest thing that you could take away from this today is, is do that for two reasons. To protect you from a liability perspective, because insurance wise, wouldn't it be easier for me to get all of my money back that I needed should, God forbid, our house go down in flames tonight or get flooded out tomorrow and all of our property damaged if I had an outside person who has said this is what she had already with the insurance person. But also, um, from an exit, an exit strategy, if I'm going to sell my business and an investor is going to come mm -hmm. in and buy my business, if I had all that documented, that would be worth more by an outside person than by my own self. Would you, would you agree with that? Absolutely. I think Tony's great. I, I try and put her stuff on my website, on my Facebook page, on my Twitter, um, and even just tell clients about it who have a lot of property. Um, I think it's a great way to have your inventory done. I mean, we don't, we've got smartphones and we can take pictures of all of our stuff, but it's just not the same. And it's not the same when it's coming from a third party. That's you know, right. Somebody else that is saying, I'm paying you to do this. I'm coming in here and I'm doing this. And she documents everything. So be prepared like for her to go through every single closet and every single drawer. But I think that that's important because it's hard for us. And I remember when we first, when Jeff and I first started adopting children in foster care and they had us fill out the sheet of how much money we spent all the time, I remember the lady coming to me and saying, you realize you spend more than $400 a month on food, right? And I was like, I guess, because I was pulling these figures, you know, out of my head. I wasn't really sure. And she was like, you have more assets than this. You've got to. Like, you can't survive and take care of two people with that few assets. And we really sometimes don't have a clear vision on what our expenses are, what our mm -hmm. assets are, what our liabilities are, and what our risks are when dealing with our children, when dealing with our home, when dealing with our business, when dealing with everything we deal with. So let's make this fun insurance. <laughs> Tell me what is one of the big, biggest things you can recommend to somebody that's out there that's saying, I don't have a clue, I don't know what's going on, I'm, I'm sure I'm at risk. What is the most important thing that you think somebody needs to put into to, to action to move forward? Believe it or not, start over. So you got insurance five, six years ago and you haven't looked at it again. You're not the same person and it's not the same coverage you needed five or six years ago. Start over, pull the policy out, call somebody, make an appointment, go have coffee with an agent, whatever it takes. But take a look at it and say, hey, do I still have, am I still occupying the same square footage? Have I moved my office location? Do I plan to have three in the next few years? Do I need to know to add those locations to my policy? Um, on your homeowner's side, do I have a teenage son now driving my car? Do I need to, yeah, I, I, I do. Um, <laughs> do I need to um, maybe even increase that, not even just stick with my homeowner's policy, do I need an umbrella policy to cover all of that? What if, how many assets do I actually have? 
do I want to be liable for? Do I want how much money do I want to pull out of my pocket? Um, I was one of nine kids growing up. I can't imagine what my parents paid for insurance. I can't imagine. I've been doing this 19 years. I have no idea what they paid for insurance when we were all younger. That's your takeaway. You need to ask them how much they paid, <laughs> so I you should. can forever be like thankful for what they invested. That's, that's saying you're not paying nearly enough. My parents paid. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Angie, thank you so much for being here. She's the insurance ninja, and I can tell you that she has, um, well, first of all, if you want to communicate with the fabulous Tanya Roller, our Director of Occupations, if you want to communicate with her, you can do so through the WOMTECH Facebook page. So go to the WOMTECH um, page and just send her a text, send her a message. But Angie's going to do something interesting. She's going to say, if you can stump the ninja, you can win a prize, and you can win some Starbucks gift certificates, which is really cool. So send Tanya a question if Angie can't answer it during our next segment you can win a prize which is so exciting and I can tell you that you can also find Angie if you go to the Facebook page the WOMTECH Facebook page or the WOMTECH directory the memory direct member directory and type in spell your first name for us <laughs> I think it's in there as Angelia so it's a n g e l i a so if you type in Angelia or you type in the name of your company um, it's Brightway Okay, Brightway Insurance. So if you type in Brightway, you'll be able to find her. She is a proud ambassador and fantastic WOMTECH member in Winter Park, Florida, and I'm sure she would love to connect with you. Now, can you do business with people outside of the state of Florida? I generally do not, unless it's commercial, and we've. I, I am licensed in other states. Depends on the states. I would be glad to have a conversation with somebody. So start a conversation. If anything, she will give you some great advice and she'll help you connect with other great people and refer you to somebody that might be able to help you in your chapter, in your city, in your hometown. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you, girlfriend, for being here. I love okay. you dearly, dearly, dearly. And she is also an amazing, she is our silent auction supporter at our National Confident Women Conference. So if you haven't met her yet, you need to come to our 2015 Confident Women Conference where we are making a difference in the life of a child and helping children aging out of foster care. So, and changing businesses all at the same time, which is just profound. So I'm so excited about that. So Angie, thank you so much for being Thanks. here today. It's a pleasure. Tanya will be accepting your questions and she will be talking to you and she will be asking them to Angie and Angie will be sure to answer those questions via WOMTECH Facebook. So.